Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets weekly webinar with myself, David Madden, Market Analyst here at CMC Markets. And today's date is Monday the 22nd of January and the time has just gone 12.15 GMT, 12.15 PM UK time. Now as always with our webinars, I'll just run through the risk warnings on the slides here, which you can read it in your own time. And then we'll proceed with the webinar itself. Essentially, the risk warnings state that anything that is that is just discussed in this webinar is my own personal views and my own personal opinions and my own just my own my own comments. Uh, they're not to be construed as explicit investment advice or or trading and rec recommendations. It's all bit fairly straightforward stuff. I'll just leave that on the screen for you to have a quick read through. Uh, in the meantime, as you're reading read through that, I'll just have a quick dis discussion about what's been going on uh, in the major headlines in the financial market in the, in the financial market news since the close of business in London on Friday. Uh, especially the biggest news, I'm not saying it's had the most impact on the markets, but the biggest news is the US government has shut down. Uh, essentially, it was passed in the House of Representatives at the back end of the last week, which is the lower house or the equivalent of the House of... Um, which is, which is the lower house, the government say the House of Commons, but it was failed to pass through the Senate, the upper house, the equivalent of the House of Lords. And for that reason, the US government has shut down. Now, it sounds much more scary than it actually is. Um, we've had, we, we, this has happened 18 times in the past 42 years. Uh, we've seen a scenario whereby this happened in October 2013, and the markets had a fairly muted reaction to it because so what essentially means is the essential elements of the government are continued to operate. Effectively, means kind of no no new laws are being brought in because it's on, the government's on shutdown. But that doesn't mean that the equivalent of the American civil service has just stopped working, and, and so on and so forth. It is business as usual. It just means in the actual the actual sphere of politics where law, laws are proposed, debated, and potentially introduced, that has ground down to a halt. So that is the really big news even though we actually haven't had much of a reaction from the financial markets. Speaking with, keeping with the political theme, uh, the SPD, the Social Democrats over in Germany, the left centre party have agreed to enter formal negotiations with Angela Merkel's CDU, Christian Democratic Union, the right centre party, to look to, to form a coalition government. Now, this this is only the kind of the very, very beginning, early steps, but, but nonetheless, yeah, it is it is potentially welcomed political news. Uh, the German the German government, Germany has been out without a functioning government since September. So if you're wondering how come the American market hasn't been rattled by the American shutdown, Germany hasn't had a functioning government. Remember that there was a federal election over in Germany in September and a hung parliament was the result and the parties still haven't gotten together. Um, Mrs. Merkel hopes to get these talks wrapped up by February 12th. So Germany could be looking uh, without a functioning government for some time to come yet. But the German civil service is in process, the German economy is going well. In the meantime, we've seen some economic indicators come out of Germany, which have been actually at all multi-year highs or indeed all-time highs. Unemployment, for example, in Germany is now at its lowest rate since unification. So just because there isn't necessarily a functioning government doesn't necessarily mean that's it, everything grinds to a halt, you know, the civil service continues, the free market economy continues, and life goes on. The political wranglings are still going on, are still going on in the background. We haven't gotten wrong, but the German economy hasn't slowed. That's why there hasn't been a huge reaction to the to this news from the financial markets in relation to the United States of America. That being said, it doesn't really give investors an incentive to go out and really snap up U.S. stocks. Uh, we are seeing we are seeing some bit of sideways trading, slightly calling it lower about the S&P and the Dow. But, but given that how much ground they've come in the last few weeks and months, uh, a, bit of a small bit of profit taking is hardly unexpected. The big news in the UK in relation to a handful of companies, um, the, it, the, there, there is talk that tomorrow we're going to hear the government has going to change the laws in relation to fixed odds betting and reduce the, the maximum stake to £100, from £100 to £2. So the likes of your lad, Brooks, your Paddy Powers, your William Hills are all under, under pressure today. Acado, the uh, the online home delivery grocer, they've announced a massive deal with the Canadian with the Canadian company, the second biggest food retailer in Canada, and they have they're, they're trading about 11 or 12 percent on the day on the back of that. So uh, we're not expecting any major econo macroeconomic news from the UK or the eurozone today. So the currency pairs for uh, have been relatively quiet on today's front. 
So taking a look now at the economic calendar, uh, for those of you who use our, use our trading platform, if you go to the Market Pulse tab, click the fourth option down, you can see Market Calendar, and have a quick run through of the major economic events of the week. This is quite a good economic calendar. It gives you a breakdown of what the of what the um, of what the actual once the result is announced. It give you it give you the actual. It give you the forecast, market consensus, and the previous figure. So looking ahead to tomorrow, the big economic indicators to watch out for are the ones here in red. The zoo, the the ZEW uh, business confidence figures from Germany come out in the morning. To come out at 10 a.m. tomorrow. That's going to be the, the biggest indicators to watch out for. Later in the day, we have consumer confidence from the Eurozone at 3 p.m. And then late at night, just before midnight tomorrow, we have trade figures coming out from Japan. We also have the public sector net, net borrowing from the United Kingdom tomorrow morning, but it is, it's more of a political one rather than one which actually drives it, the currency a whole lot. Um, so turning our attention to Wednesday, we have more important economic, economic data coming out from the UK. Uh, Wednesday is a day that is going to be dominated by the PMI numbers. Um, we have the manufacturing pay numbers from France, from Germany, and the Eurozone as a whole. Uh, we also have the unemployment figures and the average earnings figures from the United Kingdom to, uh, on Wednesday morning at half nine. That's probably going to be the biggest or one of the biggest economic indicators from the UK during the week. Later on in, in the session, around 3 p.m., we have existing home, home sales from the United States. Um, bearing in mind, we saw some mixed figures in relation to uh, new building permits and uh, building permits and new home and and um, and um, home, new home sales in uh, homes under construction in the U.S. Partially driven by the weather. If the if the, if the ground is um if the ground is rock, is rock solid as it was in some parts of the United States over the, over the Christmas period, we you know you're not in a position to actually you're not in a position to actually work on the on the building side. So we saw building permits were, were quite strong. We saw a dip in actually um in relation to actually new 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 homes under construction. Wednesday at half three, as we do every single week, we have the inventory figures coming out from the United States in relation to oil and gasoline stockpiles. Turning attention now to what's going on on Thursday, we have the German IFO business sentiment numbers coming out at 9 o'clock in the morning. 12.45, we have the ECB interest rate decision, no change there. But of course, at half one, we will have the European Central Bank President Mario Draghi giving his statement and that's going to be the one to watch out for even though we're not really expecting any major changes to it any indication to how, how, how Mr. Draghi is viewing the very strong economic indicators that have come out of certain Eurozone countries and the Eurozone as a whole what he could potentially change with his monetary policy down the line is going to be to watch out for. Broadly speaking the majority of the economic indicators from the major players such as France and Germany and the Eurozone as a whole are quite strong Except for inflation. Inflation is a bit on the weak side and that is an area that Mr Draghi is very concerned about. And inflation, I suspect, could be the one which will actually leave the door open to either additional easing beyond September, the end of September 2018. And Mr Draghi does have form of suggesting that, um, does have form suggesting that um, the, the monetary policy will remain loose because he does like to keep the euro quite weak. That being said, the euro, as we'll see in a few minutes, when we look at the euro dollar chart, is quite strong. The euro dollar is uh, we're talking we're talking multi-year highs against the, the greenback. So it is it's in Mr. Draghi's interest to talk the currency lower. At half one on Thursday, we have unemployment claims from the United States. We have new home sales from the United States at 3 p.m. and we also have Japanese CPI uh, coming out at the uh, at half eleven on Thursday night. Turning attention now to what's going on 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 um. On the Friday morning, we have UK GDP numbers coming out at half at half at half nine, and we also have US GDP numbers coming out. At, sorry, we also have durable goods figures rather coming out from the US at half past one. As scrolling further down, the US figures, the GDP figures, can also come out at half past one in the same announcement. So the usual kind of rundown with the webinar. I'll talk about now that we've covered the main stories of the week of the main economic highlights of the week. I run through some of the major markets, some of the popular indices, some of the popular commodities and currency pairs. But if there's any other other markets you'd like me to cover, please feel free to say and do so. So first off the bat, we look at like the FTSE 100. 
we can see here at the FTSE has been in a solid upward trend. Uh, the price is by far the most important economic indicator. We can see here since early December the FTSE has rallied down here. Last week created a fresh record high. We've taken a bit of a breather. We can see on the MACD indicator here, the MACD histogram, that as the market was pushing higher and higher and higher here, getting all time highs, we didn't see the same level of kind of increasing levels of positive momentum. So the price was, was increasing, but positive momentum is actually decreasing, which is a poorly sign in itself. The divergence between the two suggests that the buyers here, as they were eking out fresh all-time highs, they were actually doing it kind of, they were kind of, they were, were running out of momentum. They were kind of running low on energy. And what do you know? The market turned over on itself, dropped about 100 points, and it now appears to be pushing higher again. So the market's not moving in straight lines. So if you're looking to spot the trend, which is up to the upside, buying on the dip can be a fairly popular strategy. So the market rallied to north of 7,800, pull back south of 7,700, and now now that we're seeing an increase in positive momentum, neg an increase in negative momentum, we could look to hang, hang around these levels, but the wider trend is to the upside. So we could be looking at retesting 7,800 down the line, or uh, up high at 7,900, and then 8,000 beyond that. But if you do see any pullbacks, we could find support in around 7,700 or perhaps down around here 7,640 or down at 7,600 itself. Taking a look now at what's going on over in Germany with the uh, DAX 30. So the DAX here hasn't, uh, has been positive the last few weeks but it hasn't really hasn't actually managed to take off its all time high just yet. What we notice here is that it's been quite kind of range bound um, over the last few months in the, kind of the lower end 12,800 up to around 13,400 but now we appear to be uh, eyeing up the all time high which was, was created here in November so the market has been pushing higher here we can see a pick up in positive momentum so the increase in positive momentum confirms the positive move on the underlying market itself so it suggests that we could see this rally continue so we're pushing higher here we could be looking at taking off the all time high at 13,534 and if you go beyond that we'll be looking towards big psychological numbers of 30,000, 600, 700, 800 and so on and so forth. If we do see a pullback we may find some support in around this price area here of 13,200. We did in the past but see a lot of consolidation in around here or perhaps even down at the 50 day moving average at 13,123. Notice on the market on a few occasions occasions actually just stopped short of the 50 day moving average here so it does have previous form of actually coming with the buyers stepping into the fold just before the 150 day moving average. I'll take a look now at what's going on with the American markets. Like I said, a bit of political instability in the United States but by and large it hasn't really impacted the American markets so much. As you can see here, the market markets, the Dow Jones has been in a solid upward trend all the way as it's going on here, creating fresh all-time highs. The market has traded a sideways a small bit here, gave back some of the ground that it, it has managed to um, some of, has, has managed to give back some of the ground, but the upper trend is still very much in place. And upper trends buying on the dip has been a popular strategy over the last few months. So if we do see the market move lower, we may find some support if you have, if you have a decent correction. We may head back to this area here of 25,588 or perhaps even as low as 25,106. But if you only get a fairly shallow or a small correction, we may, we, we may even look back to Wednesday's low a bit around 20, 26,130 around this, this price area here. And seeing as once we're in kind of uncharted territory around here, if we go beyond here, we go back north properly of, of 26,000. We've been looking at towards 26,100, 200, and so on and so forth. What I will say is this, is that as the market was pushing all-time highs here, we have seen a slight cooling of positive momentum. So the rate at which traders are buying into the market is dipping slightly. So we could see some buyers, if this shutdown lasts for a bit longer, or some of the economic data from the US this week isn't too hot, we could see a bit of a pullback. And if you do see a pullback, that's where you can potentially look at uh, potentially new buyers entering the fold as the wider upper trend is still very much in place. It's a very similar view when we look at what's going on with the S&P 500. 
ratcheted up loads and loads of all time highs and the market has now cooled ever so slightly so it's been a solid upward trend uh, for, 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 the, for, the, uh, for the last number of months creating fresh all time highs nearly on a daily basis the market though has actually um, kind of run out of steam ever so slightly but notice how the market is pushing higher here yet positive momentum is actually been a decline so once, like we saw in the FTSE at, uh, earlier on, the rate at which the, their, the bulls are buying is cooling off. And if you see that, it could be an early sign that we're in, we're in, we're in for a small bit of a, of a pullback. But it's not to be overly alarmed about seeing as dips, dips in, the, in the strong upward market are fairly commonplace. So if we do see a pullback, we may find some support from the low here on Friday at 2,790 or perhaps down as low as 2,770, or if you have a decent correction, we may even hit as low as, as uh, 2,736. And move to the upside, if you manage to have a decent move, nor if you continue to push higher from here, we could be looking towards 2,820, 30, 40, so on and so forth. Taking a look at the gold market now, the gold has had a good run over the past five weeks, since the middle of December, Gold has had a decent run, partially driven by the weakness in, in the US dollar, partially driven by the fact that this, you know, we're not in the market isn't even even contemplating another rate hike from the United States until the March meeting, which is pretty much two months out from now. So we're almost at we're, we're, we're potentially about eight weeks away from another potential interest rate hike from the United States. So for that, the inverse relationship between gold and and interest rates. Uh, is is uh, acting as a factor as that as well. It's also worth noting that the last two Januarys have been decent months for gold, and that, that's precisely what we've seen as well uh, in 2018 so far. So, taking a look at the gold market since uh, early since mid December, the gold market has been a solid upward trend. Granted, we have given back some of the ground from the fresh four month high that was created here uh, only actually this day last week, but notice. But it's still an upward trend, so if we do see any moves moves lower, we may find some support in around this price action here, in around 13.20, or even as low as down as 13.06, or the big psychological number of 1300 itself. Notice how as the market was pushing higher here, hit a fresh uh, four-month high, we did see a distinctive decline in positive momentum. So when that happens here, this can be viewed as as divergence, whereby the market's pushing higher, but we're not seeing uh, uh, higher highs being reflected in the positive momentum. So the price is rising, but positive momentum is actually cooling. So once again, we could see a, a bit of a pullback in the price of gold. So we may we, we may remain in around the kind of 1330 or kind of 1325 region for some time. But bearing in mind the trend of the last five weeks is to the upside. So we could, we could be looking at, at if, if the upper trend does continue. To, uh, to move in that favour, we could be looking at taking a, moving towards 13.58, which is the high from September. And if we go north of 13.58, we could be looking to go to 13.75, which is the high from July 2016. I'll take a look now at what's going on in the oil markets. The oil markets have been quite strong very recently, but we have seen a bit of a pullback in recent sessions. So this is the price of Brent crude oil over the last six months. As you can see, it's in a very solid upward trend, higher highs, higher lows. After creating a higher high here, fresh three-year high, we now see the price pull back ever so slightly. And we have seen an ever so slightly increase in negative momentum. So the market, the price is moving lower, negative momentum is on the rise. This negative mood could last for a few more sessions to come. And if you do, we may see some fresh buyers enter the fold, seeing as that find on the dip has been a popular strategy over the last six months. We have seen some fairly decent corrections over the last six months on the price of Brent crude. So if we do move lower, we may find some support in around the 62.26 area, or $66 a barrel, or $65 a barrel on Brent. But moving to the upside, the big should the wider trend that's been in place for the last six months continue, the next big level to watch out for to the upside will be 72.74, which is this price here from back in late November or early December 2014. We saw a spike here, and given that it was a, kind of a straight move down here in this time period, there really isn't aren't many price areas to keep an eye out for. 
Now the price now, I'll turn, I'll turn our attention now to WTI, looking quite similar, whereby the market was in a solid upward trend for six months. He had a multi, he had a three year high only last week. And now what, what we're actually seeing is the market come off ever so slightly. So similar vein here, higher highs, higher lows, in a solid upward trend. He had a three year high here, and now we're seeing the market pull back, and pull back lower here. So as the market's moving lower here, um, and a bit of profit taking is set in, we may find some support in around this price action here of $62 a barrel, or perhaps even down as low as $60 a barrel itself. But as the price is drifting low here, we may see some fresh buyers enter the fold, seeing as buying on the dip has been the name of the game for the last six months. And moves to the upside, if you take out the recent high of nearish $65 a barrel, Northern 65 will be looking towards 66, 67, and of course the big elusive $70 will be the big one to watch out for down the line. Uh, turning our attention now to a couple of currency pairs. The euro has been in strong form uh, over the last few over the last few months. The wider trend for 2016 was, was quite was 2017 was quite positive. We took a bit of a breather in, in late in September 2017, but basically since November the kind of upward trend has resumed for the euro dollar. So it's pushing higher here, edge eyeing up the 123 level, but still very much so in um, in a, in, a, in an upward trend. So the next big level to watch out for the upside. Will be 124, 125. If we do see any kind of moves lower in the price of the, of the euro dollar, this area here of around the 122, or perhaps even as low as 121.65, could be areas where the support may come into play, or even down as far, as far from the uh, December, late December, early January high of 120.92. And also that level is significant as well because it was the high from September. So if we do move lower, we could find some, some buyers enter the fold in around here. It's only if you if you should take out, have a decent move south of the 50-day moving average and the one-day moving average in these price areas here of, of around um, 118.40, will we then be actually looking to concern that we, we actually could be in for a fairly sizable correction. And if that does happen to take place, the levels to watch out for the downside will be the kind of 117 area or perhaps even down as low as 115.54. Sterling has had a good run as well. Uh, the highest, we, we seem to be creating fresh 18 month highs for Sterling. This is the level we're at now on the, on the pound versus the US dollar. is basically the highest level we've seen since the EU referendum vote uh, in June 2016. So this is a classic example of of an upward trend. If you draw a trend line from the lows of March last year through the lows of August last year, granted there's a few occasions where the where the market has traded below that trend line, but it's always managed to kind of move north of it again. We're in a solid upward trend, we're not too far off an 18 month high here. Uh, so the trend is, is, is very very much at the upside. So the big psychological number to watch out for the upside will of course be 140 on the pound versus the US dollar. And move north of that, we could be looking towards 141, 142. But if you do happen to push lower, I wouldn't necessarily be, uh, if you see me lower, I wouldn't be surprised because of profit taking coming into the equation. If we do move to the south, we could be looking at support coming into play in around the 138 level, or perhaps even down from September high at 136.59. And then even south of that, we could be looking at from the November high, um, we also saw a bit of price consolidation trough. January as well in around the 135.48 region. Turning our attention now to the euro versus the British pound, euro sterling. I'll be covering euro sterling and then I'll be covering dollar yen next. Uh, is there any markets that you guys would like me to have a look at? Please uh, type in the chat box and I'll be happy to run through them. Excuse me. Uh, the euro versus the British pound has been in a fairly narrow trend the last few months. As you can see here, it's been pretty much range bound between say 88 and 89. In my view, it's a it's, it's a it's a fairly boring market. But for those of you who like to trade range bound markets, uh, this is actually kind of a class example of a market which has really struggled to get north of 89, but it also whenever it's dipped down towards 0 spot 88, has found decent buying support. So if you're interested in trading range bound markets. 
uh, this could potentially be one to look at. But obviously, if a market moves outside those parameters beyond that range, then you can actually it's not it's not uncommon to see a decent move in whatever whatever that that direction is, be it north of 89, we could be looking quickly moving to 90, or if we break south of 88, we could be looking at ver moving very quickly towards 87. So we're trading pretty much just about on the two-day moving average. We have seen a lot of, a lot of uh, consolidation in around there. While we remain north of zero spot 88, I suspect we're going to be remain range bound not very much far north of, of zero spot 89. You'd really want to take out zero spot 89.29, a decent move beyond that to actually kind of, kind of be confident that this range bound move is over. And if you do move north of that, we can then be looking towards 90 and then beyond that again up towards 90.50. Move to the downside if you, if you have a decent, a conservative move south of zero spot 88, we could be looking to the mid December low of zero spot 87.60. And if that level is taken out, we could be heading down towards the the um, the low of December, which is also a multi-month low on the uh, on the euro dollar, which is probably a low for about five months of zero spot eight six eighty nine. Like I was saying, I'm just coming up to do the euro dollar now. As any markets you like me, sorry, the dollar yen. If there are any markets you would like me to have a quick look at, please feel free to shout out and have a look at those. So if you take a look here at the, uh, the US dollar versus the, J the Japanese yen, only last week we managed to hit its lowest level uh, since September. So we're talking about a four-month low to the downs to the downside on the on the US dollar versus the Japanese yen. So all automatically you kind of think to yourself the bias into the downside. In, in a four-month low, the first kind of alarm bells that are ringing are that the bias is to the downside. We, we have managed to bounce back from there. We haven't really got back north of the 111 price yet. Uh, if you look at the actual price action, we can see it, 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 after it hit that four month low, it pushed higher and it's been kind of grinding lower ever since. So we could be looking at another retest of 110.19, spot, spot 19, which was, the, uh, just, which was the, uh, the recent low. And if you go south of 110, spot 19, we could be looking heading back towards the September low of 109.55. And then if we go south of that, we could be looking heading back down towards 108. And then beyond that, the September low of 107.32. But while we, while we remain south of the maturity moving average, which comes into play in around 111 spot 72, I suspect the outlook for the, for the US dollar versus the Japanese yen is going to remain negative. But if you do manage to have a decent move north of the maturity moving average, we could be looking at heading up towards these highs here from, from December and early January. So on these highs, you, you really want to be taking out this level here from, from that early, early kind of mid-December mid, mid December of 113.75 before you can be kind of become confident that the downward trend that we've seen here throughout November, December and January has come to an end. And if you do head south north of 113.75, we could be looking at heading back up, testing the November high of 114.73. If there, like I said, if there are any markets you want me to cover, please feel free to shout out and I'll give you a quick rundown of, uh, of, of, of any kind of commentary, uh, what's going on in various different markets. In the meantime, what I'll do is I want to talk to you about a, uh, there's a webinar tonight, uh, Trader Development Trader Development Program Part 3, The Trader's Mindset. It begins tonight, uh, Monday 22nd of January at 1900 GMT, 7pm UK time. Also this week we have another webinar, Five Reasons to Trade the Trend. I, I like to trade the trend myself and uh, it, I, it's something that uh, in my view anyways, uh, it, the trends are, uh, tend to be fairly obvious, put it that way. Look, look at the Dow, look at the S&P, it's, it's in a solid upward trend, look at the price of oil. And this it, it's going to be quite a good set, uh, webinar on how to actually spot trends and actually more importantly how to trade the trends. That webinar is, is, is on Wednesday the 24th of January, this, this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. UK time, 19.30 GMT. And of course, next Monday, this, this day week, I'll be back in the hot seat at 12.15 doing our Monday weekly webinar. While I also have you in the line, I just want to point out our news and analysis. If you go to our home, if you go to our home page, you will see that uh, we have the other news and analysis section. Some of the uh, some of the analysis uh, that myself and my colleagues on the market analyst team in London and around the world 
upload to this to this website it gives you a breakdown of the very different updates that we do throughout the day now obviously there's, there's no investment advice in this but we do talk about the major news and okay and uh, we sometimes talk about potential prices that are worth keeping an eye out for and also talk about the various different events that are that are due out in the next in the next 24 hours so keep feel free to kind of read through those we talk about the highlights throughout the, throughout the trading session it's updated several times throughout the day now some of the some of the updates that we do get uploaded to the website itself the news and analysis section while others actually come directly on the trading platform under what's called market insights and to find market insights if you click on the market pulse click on market pulse third fourth second option down is the market insight several times a day uh, we will be updating both economic data and some of the updates that we do um, get posted to that section as well and any any uh, if, well, like, like today's web, web, webinar was advertised on the, on the inside section uh, and the video of today's webinar will also be found on that in about an hour's time and there's one last thing I do want to show you is the chart forum the chart forum here is uh, basically a quick update it can be found on a market pulse third option down chart forum it's essentially uh, a place whereby uh, the analysts updated on, on a daily basis but also you yourself the customer the, the client can also kind of write your own kind of thoughts and comments on various different markets on the chart forum for example it's, just, it's a it's a screenshot of a particular chart and a few of the words written about it and, and it mentions a couple of uh, potentially important uh, prices to keep an eye out for so the most recent one that I've done uh, this morning was Avocado, the the uh, the, the, uh, the company which which I mentioned in the webinar itself. I just talk about the price action of Avocado. Uh, this is the, the chart that I screenshotted, and this is just talk about how it's at its highest level since July 2015. There's your indicator. That's the direction the market goes. The set is clearly bullish, and discusses a couple of potential price levels whereby it, it, it could target five pounds a share, or if you see some support, it could potentially pull back to four pounds and two pence, or four pounds and three pence. So please feel free to keep an eye and, and also contribute to the chart forums itself. Now, seeing as you guys have asked you no, no further questions and comments, I do want to thank you for your time today and please sign up to future webinars. Have a good trading week and good luck.